Hello and welcome to today's video. I didn't set my stool up, so let me just get that <laughs> in the right place. So, welcome to today's video. We're talking all about digestive enzymes and why they are one of, if not the most powerful supplements that you can take for healing any kind of chronic illness. So you might think that when I say digestive enzymes, you think we're just gonna be looking at digestive illness. So Crohn's colitis, IBS, SIBO, different types of digestive problems. But the truth is your digestive enzymes affect so much of what's happening in your body, almost universally. So first of all, we can look at this from a perspective of your, if your digestion isn't working properly, your body doesn't have nutrients. So every other, every job that your body has that requires nutrients to work is going to, is going to fail, is going to struggle. But more than that, we've got a concept that I've got a little note here for me to, to talk about called enzyme capacity. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. It's a really, really interesting concept. So how do you, how do you, how do you know that digestive enzymes might be, might be something that could be helpful for you? So if you are struggling with fatigue, brain fog, and digestive problems, those are your three biggest clues that digestive enzymes might be helpful. If you have almost any chronic illness, you're probably gonna have at least one of these. So I, I don't think that there's, a, there's really a diagnosis on the planet that doesn't encompass some element of one of these. And also another really interesting clue is if you have some, if you have some liver enzyme tests that are not looking like they should. So if your liver enzyme levels are low or they're high, Digestive enzymes could be really, really helpful for you. So by taking a digestive enzyme, what can we, what can we expect to see? What would the, the results of taking a digestive enzyme look like if it's something that is helpful, that's actually helping your body? So this is something that I think is really important when we're talking about any supplementation is I, do, I, I see over and over again people with 50 or 100 different supplements that they've tried or are currently taking. If you're taking a supplement, you should feel it. You should know that it makes a difference. So when you take it, you should be like, wow, okay, this makes a difference. And if you stop, you should be like, okay, I'm, I miss this. I feel, I feel the absence of this supplement. If you're taking a supplement, you don't really notice it. It probably isn't doing very much, if, if anything at all. So some of, the, some of the good clues that taking a digestive enzyme is helping, is helping you is when you take them, you have more energy, you have increased focus. Your food intolerances are improving, so your, your digestion feels better. Your appetite is, is modified. So if you find that you have too much appetite and you, you eat too much, taking a digest, digestive enzyme may help because you might be eating too much because you can't actually digest your food. So you're hungry because you're not digesting everything. And it might also go the other way around. You might also have very low appetite because if your body knows you can't digest it, you're not gonna have much of an appetite for it. So improvements in appetite, whether that's bringing appetite up or bringing it down, that's a really good indicator. Improvements in your, in your hormones. So this kind of goes directly hand in hand with the, with the above, the, the appetite. Um, so hormones is quite a, you'd kind of have to look at labs to see this, but there is symptomology associated. So this would be kind of like this. You'd have increased energy, you'd have better focus. And your liver enzymes would probably improve as well. So if you were to do a liver enzyme test, you'd probably see improvements. This is something that's gonna take maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months for you to see on, on testing because it, it, it does take some time to see these things impact testing. But what's most important, and I always say, symptoms trump testing every single time. So if you start taking them and you notice improvements in your symptoms, it's a really good indicator that the, symptoms are, that the, that the enzymes are, are helping you. So onto ESIC, enzyme capacity. This is, this is a really interesting concept that's gonna help you understand why these can be so universally helpful for different types of chronic illness, even if they're not specifically located in the digestive system. So EC, enzyme capacity, is a, is a concept that your body is only able to produce a certain amount of enzymes in a day. So digestive enzymes, they're not the only type of enzymes that the body produce, but they are probably the biggest. So it's like between 60 and 80% of the enzymes that your, your body produces are used in the digestive process. But there are lots of other enzymes as well, like cholesterolase and you use lipase inside your body as well, not just in digestion. You've got like, so like MTHFR, methyl tetrahydrofolic reductase is an enzyme. So these are all enzymes. So your body can only produce a certain amount of enzymes in a day. Think of, I would like to take less of a Western perspective on this and look more in, in an Eastern medicine kind of perspective. Think of it like chi. So your body has a certain amount of 
life force energy. And if we look at this through that lens, your body can only produce so much energy in a day. And a lot of this energy goes to digestion. So if we support the most expensive part of the digestive process, which is, is fairly much the digestive enzyme part, the body doesn't have to allocate so many resources to the digestive system, which means it can take those other, that other enzyme capacity, the, the rest of that life force, that chi, and use it to do other things like boost your immune function, produce, produce other enzymes that your body uses for tissue breakdown and rebuilding. It can use the energy elsewhere. So that is, that is huge. And we can improve the levels of all of those other enzymes just by supporting the digestive system because your body is really intelligent and it only produces what it needs. So if, you, if you're supporting the place where your body has the most demand for these enzymes, which is the digestive system, it will reallocate those resources. It will stop producing the digestive enzymes so much and stop trying to focus on that and allocate those resources elsewhere. And this might bring in the concern of, well, what about long-term enzyme supplementation? Is it a bad thing? Is, it, is my body gonna get lazy? We're gonna cover that just here. We're gonna talk about doing this long-term. Because there can be concerns, but your body isn't stupid, as I, as I was saying. So your body will, your body will adjust. But doing this can be really helpful because not only are you freeing up that energy that your body was allocating to digestion, you're now making sure that you are actually digesting and absorbing everything, which is gonna fuel all the rest of the processes in your body. So, let's, so even in, a, in, the, in the best case scenario, your body is allocating 60 to 80% of its enzyme producing resources to digestive enzymes. If you're only able to produce half the amount of enzymes as a normal person, you're only, going to be, you're only going to be able to eat half as much as a normal person, which means you're only going to be able to digest half as much nutrition. And if you're, if you're in a chronic state of ill health, how do you expect to, to break through that and heal yourself if you can't absorb the nutrients from your food? So not only does taking the enzyme reallocate this, this chi, this enzyme capacity, this digestive energy, but it also ensures that we do have enough digestive energy as we're supporting it exogenously from outside of the body, so that we can digest and absorb everything that we need, which means food goes digested properly. This can help with reducing things like SIBO or different types of chronic gut infections, because in, in my experience, I find these are often adaptive responses to not being able to digest our food. So candida and SIBO and different kinds of gut infections usually develop to help us digest the food that we can't digest. So if we start digesting it properly, because we take a supplement and we're able to support that digestive process, the infection that isn't actually an infection is an adaptive response to help us digest the food is no longer an adaptive response. It's no longer necessary and goes away by itself. So those are two of the biggest reasons. Over here, I wanna to touch on this. So this is, this is a really, really fascinating little nugget of information that I stumbled upon and I wanna share it with you because it's been very profoundly helpful for me. So, Amylase actually acts as a mast cell stabilizer. So if you have an amylase deficiency, so this is, well, this is one example. Amylase is the primary digestive enzyme we use for breaking down starch. So most of the amylase in your body is used in the starch digestion process. This is one reason why people who have histamine intolerance feel better when they stop eating carbohydrates, especially if they can't digest them. First of all, if you can't digest them, if you don't have enough amylase, you don't have enough of the other enzymes that break down starch, not only do they go undigested, they don't nourish you, but they ferment in the gut and produce, the, the, the fermentation process can produce histamine, which causes extra histamine load. But on top of that, if your body doesn't have enough amylase, not only is it not digesting this food, you're also running out of it inside the body as well. So the digestive process and is, is where you use most of the amylase, but if you don't have enough there, you also don't have enough amylase for the other jobs inside your body. And one other job that amylase does is it stabilizes your mast cells. So if you don't have enough for your gut, you also don't have enough for your immune system. And this is gonna cause your mast cells to become destabilized. They're gonna activate, they're gonna release histamine as a consequence. So when you're, when you're in, a, in a, a point where you're trying to in, like add things to your diet, you're trying to increase carbohydrate intake, you're trying to add starch to your diet, it can be really helpful to use a digestive enzyme because not only do we make sure we digest the food properly, but we actually ensure that we don't deplete the amylase that we need to stabilize our mast cells. So I had a really interesting experience with this personally recently. I ran out of my digestive enzymes. They are, the prices are, the ones that I like, the prices have increased. It's very difficult to get good supplementation in, in Portugal. We don't have an Amazon here, so it's a, it's a bit tricky. 
and and I ran out and there was a emotional component to this to this symptom flare up so I'll, I'll touch on this very slightly very briefly this isn't the primary subject of today's video if you wanted another video on this I could talk about it so one of my worst symptoms was I would get a severe discomfort in my eyes I can only describe it as feeling like I had barbed wire in my eyes so like all of the veins in my eyes would bulge out and it would feel like I had eyelashes and, and just just stuff in my eyes all the time and it was extremely uncomfortable and this flared up when I stopped taking the enzymes. I was able to sit, sit with this and go through an SRT, somatic release technique process, and without taking enzymes, I was able to stop this symptom flare up. So the eyes just returned to normal. There was some mild itching, there was some mild level of discomfort, but I brought the symptom down from like a 10 out of 10 unbearable, cannot function, absolutely just in despair and fear, I brought that down to like a one out of 10 mild discomfort, slight itching, which was like, okay, cool. I've removed this emotional component of, of this need for the enzymes because I went through that and I processed it. If you want more information about this and how you can do this, I've got another video on my YouTube channel. Don't recall the name exactly. It's something like here's how to heal, how to heal trauma step by step. It's a step by step guide. Go and watch that. That will give you all the information that you need on this, on this process. But after this, I started to feel fatigued and I, I didn't really notice much in my digestion. I was, my, my gut was okay, so I wasn't really noticing it there. But systemically, I was having a, like a chronic low-level histamine response, just mild discomfort, slight itching in my eyes, and um, I was noticing more in my mood. I didn't feel very good, I didn't feel very productive, and I, it was a bit, hard for me to, a bit harder for me to sleep. Sort of like, I wouldn't even go as far as to say insomnia, it just took me longer to fall asleep. And I didn't feel so rested from sleeping. And this is because histamine is a neurotransmitter. So it's going to affect your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and the neurological processes that allow you to sleep and et cetera, et cetera. So I then started taking it again. I wasn't having the eye problem, so that was gone. That was really cool because it was like, okay, this, I went through this process. It was uncomfortable. It provided discomfort, but it facilitated a healing process, which was cool because I, I managed to heal that, that emotional root cause trauma. But... I st I'm still in a place now where I need this and I've been using digestive enzymes for about five or six years now and this is safe to do assuming you do it properly and now I'm going to talk to you about how you can do this properly. So if you're using long-term supplementation you want to make sure that, you're, uh, that the, the digestive enzyme that you have either contains only pancreatin which is basically a pancreas concentrate so it's like they'll get uh, pigs pancreas and they'll concentrate it down with all of the enzymes that are stored in there and then that's the supplement, or a blend of amylase, lipase, and protease. What we're trying to do here is with these supplements, we're trying to mimic our endogenous pancreatic production of enzymes. This takes work off the pancreas, this supports your enzyme capacity, and this is something that, so you're taking this work off your body, and yes, it does, you would say it becomes lazy, so it stops prioritizing the production of digestive enzymes. But your body's not stupid, it doesn't get lazy, it just reprioritizes what's important. So instead of allocating resources to this, you're giving it a break so it can reallocate its resources to other things like detoxification, like immune system, like all of the things that since being in a chronic illness haven't been prioritized. So once your body has caught up with all of those things, the enzyme production will restore itself. So this is something that, yes, if you try to come off of it before you're ready, which is what happened with me, my body said, okay, but we still don't have enough life force energy to do all of these jobs like high performance and working out and training and muscle building and recovery and immune function and produce all these enzymes at the same time. So when I came off of them too early, my body started to prioritize doing this again, but then I lost all of the other performance that my body had reallocated those resources to. So if you find an enzyme supplement that just has these, so just either, either just pancreatin, which is like an animal concentrate, or you can get amylase lipase protease blend. The brand that I really like to use for this is Lipogold, just because they don't have any fillers, any additives. And it is just amylase lipase protease. So the brand that makes these Enzymedica, they do have other supplements like Digest Gold, Digest Basic, but I don't like these as much because these have the other enzymes. And this is what I don't think is a good idea in long-term enzyme supplementation. So the other enzymes, so things like cellulase, 
invertase, these other hemicellulase, these other enzymes that can be present, these aren't enzymes that we produce ourselves. These are enzymes that are supposed to be produced by our microbiome, by our gut flora. And if they're missing, taking them as an enzyme supplement can improve your digestive health. It can make you feel better. And that's okay for short-term use, maybe like up to 12 weeks. But if you do this long-term, you're not allowing the opportunity for the microbes that produce these, these enzymes to develop. So let's take cellulase as the example and cellulose. So lots of your microflora like to eat cellulose. This is, a, this is fiber, basically, and we can't digest it. We don't produce any enzymes ourselves in our brush border enzymes or from our pancreas to break down, digest, and absorb this, this food compound, fiber, cellulose. So what happens is we encourage specific microbes, like there's certain microbes that like different types of fibers. Let's just say, for example, let's use Acomentia mucinophilia for an example here. I don't know if this is specifically the organism that, this food, that likes this food, but this is one that I see really high, really low sometimes, and it can be really connected to this problem. So if you're taking an enzyme that has like cellulase, pectinase, all of these different types of enzymes that break down foods that we usually can't digest, by the time they reach the small intestine, which is where they would start to feed and nourish our microflora, they've already been broken down into simple sugars like, like glucose and fructose, which means they just get absorbed by us and the microbiome starves. They don't have anything to eat, so they die. And these are the bugs that would produce these enzymes for you naturally. So in the case of taking these, it's sort of like, yes, this is temporary, but when your body has the resources, has the energy to do this by itself, it will do it again. But with the digestive enzymes of like pectinase, cellulase, these other ones that we don't produce, that are supposed to be produced by our microbiome, a far better way to go about this would be to try to build the microbiome back up. And by taking the digestive enzyme that has these, these enzymes in, not only are you not fixing the root cause of the problem, which is you don't have the right flora, you're actually preventing yourself from developing the right flora because you're starving them. Your microbiome is very, very connected to the probiotics you take and the foods that you eat. The most important thing is what they like to eat. If they don't have an environment that they can live in, they can't live there. And if you're not providing them with the food sources that they need, they can't live there. So if you're taking a digestive enzyme that has these other types of enzymes in, these, these enzymes that should be produced by our probiotic flora, if you're taking these, then you're not gonna be able to colonize this flora because they don't have an environment that they like to live in. So, down here we've got um, microbiome starvation. So if you take other enzymes, it will starve your microbiome. And when you do this, you will lose diversity. And when you lose diversity, you lose health. All, almost every single disease is directly inversely correlated with microflora diversity. So the higher your diversity is, the less likely you are to have any kind of disease from gut and digestive issues, arthritis, fibromyalgia, almost everything. So the smaller the diversity of your microbiome, the greater the likelihood of you developing some kind of chronic health problem. So you don't really wanna be doing this. If you need to support your body with these other enzymes and you want to support the microbiome to start developing, the, your best option is juicing. Juicing removes a lot of the insoluble fibers that can be really harsh on the gut. So this would be things like cellulose, this like really rough abrasive fiber, and will provide you with more of the water soluble compound fibers. So for example, pectin, apple pectin, for example, is soluble. So if you juice apples, you provide your body with pectin, which is gonna encourage the growth of organisms that make pectinase, which is gonna help to restore your, your innate ability to produce that enzyme again, which increases your level of food tolerance. So yeah, that pretty much wraps everything up. I'm just gonna go over briefly, see if we have any questions. If you have questions, let me know now, because as I'm going through and answering these questions, when I finish, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the live. So if you have your questions, make sure you leave them for me now. So, Devandra says, why is it that enzymes don't work at all? Now Enzyme Medica tried all the brands, can you explain? So if you, this is kind of what I was saying at the, at the beginning. If you're taking a supplement and you don't notice a difference, then it's not, it's not helping. It's, it, you're, you're focused in the wrong area. This is where the concept of root cause is really important because if the root cause isn't that you have low digestive enzymes, taking digestive enzymes isn't gonna do anything because it's not really addressing the problem. So you have, to, you have to focus on where the actual problem is. And if you're taking a supplement and you don't notice if you feel better or worse, it doesn't really do anything, 
it's not addressing a problem that you actually have. So you have to focus where the body actually needs help. And in this case, it sounds like that's not where your body needs help. Rico says, but what if you have a mold exposure and most enzymes are made out of fungi like Aspergillus? Yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good uh, question. So the ones that I suggested, the Lipogold, they are actually grown from um, an Aspergillus, the, lip, the, the Lipase is grown from an Aspergillus species of mold. However, I also had mold exposure and those were the best enzymes that I tolerated out of anything. So just because it's been grown from a, from a mold, you'll actually be surprised that the enzyme itself doesn't contain mycotoxins or any components of mold. Some people are still intolerant, so the, the only way that you'll know that is if you actually try it. But I have worked with, and m I myself have experienced, mold exposure and tolerating enzymes that have been produced by, by fungus, even Aspergillus species, which is, a, which is a mold. So this is something you have to try. If you don't tolerate this very well, use a, use a pancreatin-based supplement instead. So this is a, an extract of a glandular from an animal's pancreas. So this way it's it's not grown from, a, from, from any kind of bacteria or anything like that. So use a, a pancreatin-based based supplement. Really good question, nice one. Jana says, you're a rock star, I need to watch this one. Yes, you do, you do, Jana, this will be really helpful for you. Alan Flynn says, hi Will, what is the difference between digestive enzymes and probiotics? So a digestive enzyme is a, a catalytic protein. So this means, so the definition of a catalyst means it's a substance that speeds up a, re, a reaction process and isn't consumed in the process. So a digestive enzyme is helping you to speed up what's happening in your digestive system. Think about if you leave, say for example, like an apple or a loaf of bread on the side, it takes, it starts to decay, but it takes like weeks or even months for it to fully disappear into nothing. And when you eat food, it needs to be, it needs to become you and become energy for you and become your body really, really fast. And this is what enzymes do. They make this process happen quickly. They make this process happen rapidly. So you can absorb the food. Whereas a probiotic is a living organism. So probiotic is something that is alive and works for you inside your gut and is beneficial to your health. So some probiotics actually produce certain types of digestive enzymes. I don't know how I can define the difference more, they're, they're, they're very different things. So digestive enzymes are catalytic proteins that help you break down, digest and absorb your food. They help it happen quickly so you can extract nutrients from your food and have energy. Whereas probiotics are beneficial organisms that cohabit with you inside your gut. They produce things like enzymes, they produce neurotransmitters, they repair the gut lining, they do lots of different jobs. So they're two very different things. Rico says, um, Okay, yeah, I, I think I answered this question already, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, Judith says, can you suggest one, please? So one, one, one I really like is uh, Lipogold, that's a really great option. If you don't tolerate um, enzymes that have been produced by bacteria and yeast, a good option, especially if you need stomach acid supplementation and ox bile supplementation as well, is the Now Super Enzymes brand. So this is a, uh, this is a pancreatin based, I tried this, but my body doesn't tolerate the, the HCL very well. So this didn't work for me. So if you know that you need HCL and oxbile as well, this is also a really good option. But if, you're, if you don't tolerate the oxbile and the HCL like me, just Google for a pancreatin-based digestive enzyme. But I think generally Lipogold is, is great for, for most people. Um, Joanne says, we are losing diversity with the use of enzymes. Why would enzyme cause this to occur? So this, this happens because when we remove, when we take a digestive enzyme like uh, a pectinase or a cellulase, we remove the food source of our microbiome. So if the, if the bacteria in our gut don't have food, they're gonna starve and they die out and then we lose diversity. So you have to be careful when you're doing this. And if you're gonna use a broad spectrum that includes things like pectinase and um, cellulase, going through periods of not having it or not having it at every single meal can mitigate some of that damage because you're having some times where you're eating these foods and you're not digesting these prebiotic fibers. Uh, Alan says, is there a danger of taking probiotics longer term? I don't think so. You have to do it responsibly. So not everybody can do supplements like probiotics straight away. You have to make sure you're supporting all of the digestive function. So I look at this through the lens of the five pillars. Whenever you're taking probiotics, you have to make sure that you're supporting your stomach acid, your digestive enzymes, your bile, your motility, and your mucosa. 
if you're not doing that, you predispose yourself to things like SIBO or different types of gut imbalance and dysbiosis. But if you're, if you're doing these five things, taking a probiotic is almost always beneficial. I know it, you might think, okay, but why do I have to take a probiotic? Not everybody does. The thing is we're exposed to so many things that kill our bacteria now. So there's glyphosate and pesticides on all the foods we eat. We're exposed to mold and mycotoxins. When you walk down the road and you smell uh, the car fumes, that kills your, your probiotic flora. You're just being, they're being killed all the time. Electromagnetic radiation, this all damages your microflora. So it's really important we replace them. Sometimes probiotics aren't the best option. Fermented foods are, are a better option for some and they can be more cost effective and, and actually more treatment effective as well. So this is something that's more, you have to play it case by case. If you need some help with that, reach out, let me know. I'm gonna to have to wrap this up soon, I have a call. I'm slightly late already, but I wanna get these, these answered. Kerry says, hi, what is the difference between digestive enzymes and taking HCL? So HCL reduces the, the pH in your stomach. So it brings your, to pH stands for potential hydrogen. It increases the concentration of acid in the stomach. This is really important because it liquefies all the food. So digestive enzymes can't work on food that they can't touch. And the liquefaction process of the acid really helps with this. But also some enzymes work in different enzyme range, uh, enzyme in different pH ranges. So for example, um, pepsin, which is the enzyme that breaks down protein for us, only works between a pH of one and three. So if the pH doesn't reach that point, the enzyme, even if you produce it, doesn't activate, it doesn't work, it doesn't do anything. And like for example, amylase works between pH seven and eight. So if the pH in the gut isn't reaching the proper levels, even if you do produce the enzymes, it's not gonna work. This is one reason that I like the Lipogold that I suggested for the amylase, lipase, and protease. The, the, the blend of these three different enzymes is called a theroblend, which means they have different enzyme, even in amylase, they have like five different types of amylase that work at different pH ranges. So they have an amylase that works between pH one and three. They have an amylase that works between pH three and five. They have an amylase that works between five and seven, and they have an amylase that works between seven and, and nine. So this is one reason I really like Lipogold, is that theroblend. It really uncomplicates a lot of this. Um, Rico says, how do you get a good microbiome again if you don't have any good bacteria left? In combination with SIBO mold, candida, colon inflammation, leaky gut, I don't know what to do and what to eat anymore. I'm starving myself so hard that I don't eat almost anything. I totally get you, Rico. I've been there myself. I think in your case, it's really hard to give you meaningful insight because you're in a very tricky, personalized problem. If you want to reach out and I can try to help you personally, I would, I would, I would, I would be happy to help you. It's just you have a lot going on. And it's really hard to provide meaningful insight with such a specific situation. Dom says, how, can you, how many lipo golds can you take at one meal to break down, say, 30 grams of fat? I think that generally two lipo gold with each meal is general rule of thumb pretty good. Any you, that you don't use in the meal, you're gonna you, your body can reabsorb them and use them for the next meal. So you, you're not actually even wasting them. And they'll go to doing other jobs. Like we have lipase that we use in our body for other things. We have amylase that we use in our body for other things. So even if you use more enzymes than you need to digest the meal, they're still not gonna be wasted. Your body's gonna use them for something else. So I have a call now. I'm gonna have to finish this up really quickly. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if this is a topic you're interested in. Um, let me know if you have any other video topics that you'd like me to cover. So that's everything for me today. I'll catch you soon. Thanks for coming and I'll see you soon. Ciao. Oh, I've got to slide you over to hang up. Ciao.